now that we discussed. Now that we discussed the law of conservation of baryon number for particle interactions, let's take a look at the following example that gives us six different particle interactions and our goal is to use the law of conservation of baryon number to determine which particle interactions will take place in nature. And let's begin with interaction number one. So, we basically want to use the following table. So, this table tells us that for a proton or a neutron, the barium number is positive 1, but for their corresponding antiparticles, the antiproton, antineutron, the barium number is negative 1, and everything else gets a barium number of 0. So let's begin with interaction one. So let's label the barium number for the protons. So we know from this table that a proton gets a positive one. Now from that same table, we know that any antiparticle, in this case, the antiproton or antiproton gets a negative one. So we see that on the right side we have our zero. On the left side we have a value of positive two and since these are not equal that means the barium number is not conserved and so this reaction will not take place in nature. Now let's move on to interaction two. So let's begin by labeling the protons. The protons once again get a positive 1. The antiparticles, in this case the antineutron and antiproton, get a negative 1. That should be negative 1. So we see that on the left side we have plus 1 plus 1 minus 1, so we have a positive 1. And is this equal to negative 1, negative 1 plus? So this is negative 1. We see that the barium numbers are not equal, and so this reaction will not take place in nature. Let's move on to the third interaction. We have a proton interacting with an antiproton, and we produce a proton, an antineutron, we produce a positron, as well as our electron. So, let's label the protons. They each get a positive 1. Let us now label our antiparticles. So we have a negative 1 and a negative 1. And then we also have our positron and electron. And because they're part of the everything else category, they both get a 0. So we see that on this side we have a barium number of zero, on this side we have a barium number of zero. Since zero equals zero, this reaction does take place, at least according to the law of conservation of barium number. Now let's move on to fourth. In the fourth interaction, we have two protons that each interact, so that means they get a positive one. And so they produce this proton, a positive one. We have the anti proton gets a negative one. And we have these two. Now, because these are once again part of everything else, they get a zero. So we see that on the left side, we have positive two, which is not equal to zero on this side. And so this reaction does not take place. <clears throat> Let's move on to reaction four. So, we have two protons interacting with one another, so we'll give them a plus one. We'll give this one a plus one, and this one a plus one. We see that we have our antiproton that gets a negative one, the antineutron gets a negative one, and so on this side we have a plus two. On this side we have a zero, and since they are not equal, this reaction will not occur. And finally, our last interaction. So, two protons interact with one another. We produce three protons and an antiproton. So, we basically have a bunch of positive ones for all the protons. And then we have our 
negative 1 for the antiparticle, the antiproton. So we have positive 2 on this side. And this is equal to 3 minus 1 or 2. And so this means that this reaction does occur. So basically, out of these six interactions, particle interactions, only two of them will occur, at least according to the law of conservation of barium number. In interaction 1, 2, 4, and 5, we see that these types of interactions do not conserve the barium number, and so that means they will not take place in nature.